Is it an interesting centerpiece? <laughs> People are gonna be like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and welcome to the Filipino Free Thinkers podcast that's also a video. I'm Red. I'm Pepe. I'm Margie. I'm Ria. Hi Ria, welcome. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. Let's give her an authentic yeah, yeah. first time Have welcome on the podcast. So we're talking about two things. The first is Greg Slugman's bill that protects property rights of same-sex couples. And the second is a child who in Poland who recently committed suicide to be reunited with her father. So let's start with the more positive news. Let's uh, let's hear more about that bill, Pepe. Um, in a nutshell, Greg Slagman um, proposed a bill that will protect property rights of same-sex couples who are already living together. So they prop they have the option to um, have the property uh, shared, or like, do they want to continue owning things individually? So it's pretty much uh, like the property rights of married couples, uh, heterosexual couples who are already married. Um, except this is now being this uh, is being extended to homosexual couples who are already living together. So in this piece of legislation, living together as same-sex couples is put on the same level as being married. Like Pretty much, yeah. Civil with regards to property rights. With so regards you, to yeah. property rights. Yeah. So is this a positive thing? Let's. Uh, of course, it's a positive yeah. thing. Yeah, it's a positive thing. But I find it weird because. Um, like I've been living with someone for a long time, so like, and and uh, but we're in a heterosexual relationship. What's stopping us from getting those property rights too? I've been living with someone for a long time as well, and you're right. Like, yeah. we could have actually. And you don't legally. We could have registered for that that kind of wedding. I think mm -hmm. there's a like when you're living together with someone for five years, there's that option that you can. File that, so that you get can a get license or that kind of uh, marriage, I think. Yeah. Uh, but my question is, it, does this law also apply to uh, straight couples straight couples or couples of whatever? Yeah, or yeah. whatever. Because um, the assumption here is that if you work together to to make a living together, mm -hmm. then you would have equal right to the property that you, you, you own together. Over the years, yeah. 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 So that if you should separate or if one of the partners should pass away or mm -hmm. whatever, you, you want to end that relationship, you can easily split the, the belongings mm -hmm. and no third party can interfere and take what's not really theirs. So this, uh, this would definitely be something good for, for same-sex couples, mm -hmm. but I wonder why it's not the same for yeah. for heterosexual couples. I have a feeling it's because um, maybe it's sort of a, what do you call this a consolation prize. Maybe it seems that way. Yeah, it's, it seems that way. We the, can't give you wedding yet, yeah. so why don't you have a bone like this bone? <laughs> but uh, but the the thing is, if if this bill gets uh, gets passed then heterosexual couples would be at a disadvantage now yeah. yes because they would have to go through the whole wedding yeah uh, and process it, yeah. some people don't want that what it's, do you think yeah, it's it's more complicated to get a wedding than like just apply for these property rights yes I, yes i have a question about this bill so it grants the rights to co-ownership for co-ownership to yeah. same-sex couples and they don't do they have to get a like Marriage license. You can. You, no, can. Yeah, you can. Yeah, so, you can. So, you yeah. can. So, yeah, you don't. Yeah. So, you, just, don't, you just, what would be the proof of living together? Just yeah. living together. Probably just an affidavit that you would both sign saying yeah. that you've been you, together for so many and yeah, years. Yeah, years and then yeah. you're doing. Yeah, I don't know exactly expenses. how. Maybe a witness would help. But, but yeah, like um, you just tell the, the relevant people that you live together. Or that you intend to live together. Does this work in a in that, that kind would of way? Also, I'm not I would sure. Think yeah, that should also extend That's a valid, to heterosexual. Yeah. So how? But it, I don't think it does. So how strongly do you think the Catholic Church and conservative groups and individuals would try to op oppose this measure? It's gonna be a. It's gonna be the same hubbub about you know the one. It's gonna be one of the death bills granting rights to yeah. homosexuals, and it'll be the the death of morals. Yeah, I wonder society. though, 
like some of them would definitely think it's a foot in the door strategy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It would make same sex marriage it's easier to pass. Thing, yeah. But I, I I would imagine that some of them would think this is this might be the 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 way that we could oppose same sex marriage by telling them you already have this. Why would you need same sex marriage? You some of them would yeah. Happening mm -hmm. with the yeah, like you already have this bone. Yeah. Why would you well, need I the meat? I want the whole. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Be vegetarian. <laughs> okay. Um, other other thoughts on this issue? Mm. Um, I just got curious. Like yeah. I'm just gonna throw the question out there. Um, the ba technically in Catholicism, they don't hate the sinner. The they sinner. hate the sin. So is it okay if two if two gay men live together? But they're celibate. Something like that. <laughs> like, of course it is. It is. It is. As long as they don't lie this in the same way that uh, man a man lies with a woman. Man. Bible. <laughs> yeah, citation there. Yeah. Although I, I, I'm wondering if most uh, like conservatives would be against this bill because a lot of them they're against the redefinition of marriage it's, or yeah, changing it's not the, the sanctity marriage. of marriage. It's marriage. It's, it's just, not marriage. It's not. It's just another so it's property. Yeah. Legal. Yeah. yeah. Thing. Yeah, so I think I don't know if they're gonna fight about that. I think one of the the things that they would be against is that they would think if people availed of this option, then they would be brought to temptation. Ah. And of course, conservatives don't want people tested because yeah. they don't have faith <laughs> in in people's power yeah. to resist temptation. So, any other words on this issue before we move to the next one? I think it's definitely a. It's a positive it's thing. A it's a foot in the door. It a, brings out, it brings the issue into public discussion, and then it's a parang it raises good questions about the places of homosexuals in society. No, no, no. I disagree. I think it's yeah. not a foot in the door. I think if this bill passes, then I promise we won't ask for same-sex marriage anymore. <laughs> promise we won't ask for it anymore. No, it's not a foot in the door. Right, it's not a foot in the door. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 Sure. Well, it's the only thing we're asking. If, if you're the against same-sex yeah. marriage, you will be for this cohabitation <laughs> property here. So our next discussion will be about Maria Kislow. So she was a, a child in Poland, and one day she was found hanging in her bedroom. So she hung herself, and allegedly she killed herself so that she could reunite with her father who had died earlier. In heaven. So, in heaven. In heaven. So according to the story, she had been depressed, but her mother didn't really know how depressed she was. So until it got to a point where she had to take her own life. Now the sources of this story so far have been mainly two websites, mirror.co.uk and the Daily Mail. And the Which are tabloids. The track record of these sources is not as good as CNN or Reuters or any of the more credible news sources. So Take it with a grain of salt. But what I want to talk about is the what this the questions that stories like this bring up. Mm -hmm. What kinds of superstition is it safe to teach children? Like, is what are the dangers of indoctrination? Like, how, or even just the dangers of saying there's an afterlife. You know, like or, that's yeah, where or the belief like that. in that. And more relevantly. Halloween is coming up, and I'm sure a lot of beliefs about the afterlife and about superstitious creatures are gonna crop up. And a lot of these things do affect young people a lot because they tend to be more scared than adults, I, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about that. First, let's, let's focus on the story in Poland, if it were true. Let's assume that it is true. So of course, um, it is a sad story. Yeah. What are your guys' um, takes on this? Well, I think the because I, I already posted it on my wall on Facebook, and some of my friends have commented, and um, the discussion went something like, "It um, we were weighing the depression against the superstition, like what was more um, at fault, that or what, what's the, yeah the bigger reason for uh, the the child committing suicide," and um, personally, I think. These two problems are somewhat separate. We can address them both separately. Like we can address depression, and we can also address superstition at the same time. Um, so it's not an either-or thing. Mm. Um, definitely, with superstition, my stance is like we should not be feeding this stuff into the minds of children. Or if 
if ever we do, we should be doing it in such a way that we're teaching them why uh, these superstitions are wrong. So that's, that's how I feel about it. But that's less comforting, you know. <laughs> mm. So that's why it's so easy to just tell them that, you know, oh, you'll see your Lola again, you'll see your dad again when... They're in a better place. That yeah. They're in a better place, yeah. that's kind of like a more um, fluffy saying. Okay, but I think it's a uh, old-fashioned way of going about it. Um, I think there are more modern, more um, truthful ways of telling kids, uh, comforting kids um, over something that could be potentially distressing. For example, like if their grandfather died, you could very logically explain to them, and with, with, but still with care, um, that, oh, your grandfather passed away, um, he's no longer with us, his body can only go so far, um, but he lived a really good life, and um, what do you call this? Now he's part of the crown. <laughs> the cr no, not the crown, but uh, the earth. The, he's just his energy again. Something, something like Energy's that. Yeah, concerned. like Deepak. Not, 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 not like not energy. <laughs> like, uh, Deepak Chopra. No, not that. You know, like, like, he's, he's, he's still part of the universe. He's just yeah. not. He's In just it, not um, he's just conscious anymore. He's, uh, yeah, yeah, he's just like molecules. Yeah, teach teach the kid about relativity as well while you're at it. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, but just basically the like, but, more but I think you know that's a cynical way of looking at how people deal with these situations. It's as if these people are only lying to give comfort to young children. But I think in most cases, they actually believe these things. They think that there actually is a uh, heaven, yeah. Yeah. that the soul of the departed is actually there, yeah. and that one day they will actually meet each other. So it's not an option of, can I just give them rational things in this explanation? It's what they believe is actually true. I, and, think, no. I think it started out that way, though. Like, a ch a, an adult comforting a child. This one well-intentioned adult. Yeah, and and started it, a the whole child just kept that belief until somebody <laughs> else was a uh, child. Yeah, it's a branch of life. Yeah, he taught that kid, and then people grew up with what they were taught as children, usually. Yeah. So it well, kind of happened that way. Well, even adults, when you tell them the whole, you know, it's you could indoctrinate even adults. Like yes. you can, yeah, you can teach true. them religion or superstition at whatever age. It's really yeah. a if they're not a way of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. You know that that anyone of any age can get used to. So, but yeah, it can become a shortcut sometimes. Like when you want a kid to be to behave, you can yeah. tell them Santa Claus will give you a nice gift. Yeah. Or, or if, you'll get you know, uh, or you'll it's get kidnapped cold. by yeah. a mumu if you don't behave. You it's a, you'll either get a bunch of coal or a PS2 for <laughs> for Christmas. So take your pick, but right? You'll lovely. either get a PS3 or a PS2. Ah. <laughs> so PS4. Better... PS4. <laughs> oh, PS4. Okay. Yeah, but um, speaking of of these superstitions that we use on children, it's uh, like I said, it's Halloween, mm -hmm. and so, of course, a lot of kids are are still very afraid of the dark. They find it difficult. To go to sleep, they're they're afraid of boogeymen, like under the bed or in the Philippines. It's inside the closet. Uh, there's on something the, there, no? Or on the roof. Or on the roof, or or outside wherever. The and instead of telling these children that, that there are no ghosts, these these things do not exist, I think other superstitions are introduced to counter. You know, <laughs> there are angels that protect you. And again, uh, yeah, it's and, a whole mythology. And again, the thing is, they believe these things. Yeah. You know, they believe in the boogeyman. They believe in ghosts. They believe in angels. And it's you, know, you have to work within the system to be consistent, I, I suppose. But it, I, I remember when I was a kid, I when I believed these things, and I did believe, I was very afraid. And what what would I do? I would pray. Pray and, and sleep with know, the rosary. I didn't go that far. Okay. You know. <laughs> Yeah, something I was particularly afraid of was like Nuno sa punso. Whenever you you had to well, urinate or point to, yeah, 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 you have to go tabi tabi po. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to be afraid of that stuff. Yeah. You urinated on trees often. <laughs> you heard it here first. I was a and and the, the variation of, you know, the, the permutations of which superstitions people still believe in or don't believe anymore, of course, varies a lot. Mm. But 
a lot of people find it difficult to let go of the whole thing because it could unravel until you have yeah. nothing left. If well, you, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not that. Whether their common thinking is like, what have you got to lose? Tabi, saying tabi tabi po. That's so it's a Pascal's wager kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what's yeah, the harm exactly. in doing? What's the harm? What's you know? the harm? And just this, in case it's real. <laughs> and this afraid. hypothetical story of the of the of kid. The, you know, it, it's one example. It, okay. If it's true or, or not, I'm sure. Like other stories like this, like the the, the more recent story about that pilot. Who instead of going through the safety precautions, yeah. oh, just, oh, just said a prayer. Oops. Like you know, those yeah, that there's the harm. I mean, superstition can be harmful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, alternative you, medicine and if you want more details, there's a link here. What's the harm? There you go. There, that's okay. a nice. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I'm gonna repeat it here again, <laughs> just to to make sure that you check it out. It, superstition can be harmful, and this Halloween, of course, it's a uh, it's another pagan. Very superstitious uh, thing. Yeah. A lot of Catholics, of course, will be going to masses or have already gone to masses, saying that uh, where where the priest would tell these kids to dress up as saints, saints. <laughs> instead of uh, monsters and demons that yeah. glorify the and the priest won't say these demons, these ghosts are not real. They can because yeah. <laughs> that's the that's the it's whole part thing. Of it's part whole of their package. Yeah, it's part of the package. And again, like, uh, of course, some people really believe in these things. I advise you to, to question everything that you believe. Um, a second, a third time, just read different perspectives and see how, how it affects your, your kids. Because there is harm. Like, a lot of people would say, I, I turned up okay. Like, I believed in all of these things and I turned out okay. But sometimes you don't. And do you really Sometimes want to risk it depends that? in tragedy. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Exactly. I mean, if I were to raise a kid, um, I would try to make sure that I was as truthful as possible. Um, there, I, there are ways to be truthful to a kid without traumatizing them. I think we've just been so spoiled and uh, so lazy about trying to explain the harder things in life. When if we just give it a little more thought, um, we can actually be able to tell kids anything without having to um, bullshit them, basically. Yeah. Not to discount what you just said, you know, of course, I would think parenting is really hard. Yeah, of course. You know, but Tigoro, I know, yung ibarin, they just get so tired of kids asking why. Yeah. Like, why, why? <laughs> so maybe they're like, you know what? Like, he's in heaven, or you know what? Santa will give you coal. Mm, so yeah. It's, or a, it's a quick shortcut because, you know, <laughs> Things need to get done too. Yeah. So we'll just take meds and take, take oh. what? <laughs> or other than superstition, you could think twice about having kids in the first place. <laughs> That's yep. true. I mean, uphold the R H law. <laughs> and yeah. yeah. With that, uh, thank you for watching this episode of the podcast, and see you next time. Happy Halloween! Bye. Happy Halloween! Trick or treat! Boo! Boo.